According to the Mental Health Foundation, 450 million people worldwide have a mental health problem, including 1 in 12 suffering from depression. Most people who experience mental health problems recover fully or are able to live with and manage them, especially if they get help early on. In the UK, there is a long process to see a specialist. For a student, you have to go through several stages, including well-being and GPs, before getting onto a waiting list. Once on the list, patients can be waiting for as long as 40 weeks, which in that time, there is no contact at all between specialist and patient. This can lead to the patient's mental health deteriorating. The British Medical Association investigated the NHS. They found that 1 in 10 CCGs and just over half of the mental health trusts keep a record of how long patients are on waiting lists for. While on a waiting list, there is a variety of apps you can download, some approved by NHS and some not. The apps had some positives and negatives. For example, the NHS where mind and mood pass aims to change your perspective on the day. So we'll ask you questions like what have you achieved, what you are looking forward to, and what you are grateful for. The app is informative about the different parts of the body and about anxiety, stress, and depression. These apps may help some people as it gives them a place to write about their problems and record their feelings on a daily basis. We found that people can write as much as they want, but that doesn't mean anyone is reading it. People are talking, but no one is actually listening. Throughout your life, you are taught the importance of being able to speak, but listening is just as an important skill to have. With, with the rise of social media, it is easy to have your say on everything. This is regarding the listening aspect of a conversation. Director of Internal Communication and Engagement at the BBC, Heather Wagner spoke about the importance of listening. Using the analogy, if speaking is the lead singer of the band, listening is the bass player. Less glamorous and often overlooked, but vital to the rhythm of the songs they play. In an article, she writes about how to listen to someone and not just hear them. To listen, you have to be fully present. Your mind has, has to be fully engaged with the speaker. For a conversation to work, she says you need to talk about some outcomes you want to achieve from the conversation, as well as reassuring the speaker about the confidentiality of the conversation this allows the speaker to know they are in a safe space. Body language is a crucial part of the conversation, making the speaker aware that you are engaged in the subject. This can be shown through gestures, posture, and eye contact. It's important to have a calm demeanor, your limbs uncrossed, and gently nod your head at appropriate times. Eye contact is tricky because everyone is different and ex expects a different level of eye contact. Too much eye contact with someone that is nervous can be off-putting. At the same time, too little eye contact with someone who's more confident in what they're saying can convey that you aren't listening. You can use a mirroring technique where the listener spends the first couple of minutes observing the speaker, watching how often they break eye contact this is their preferred level, which you can then mirror, keeping the speaker in their comfort zone. After doing this research, we found that truly listening to someone is hard and is unknown to many people. Carl Rogers said that we think we listen, but very rarely do we listen with real understanding, true empathy. Yet listening of this very special kind is one of the most potent forces for change. With this in mind, we need to adapt so society can change for the better. Listening is especially important when it comes to mental health. The Prince Edward Viaduct in Canada had reported 492 people commit suicide off of the bridge. The government decided to spend $5.5 million installing steel rods all the way along to prevent people from jumping off. This is a short-term solution. All that money spent and they haven't helped anyone, but only moved the problem to a different location. Everything starts with listening. Bridges in Seoul, Korea had telephones installed so that if someone went to the bridge to jump off, they could use the phone to talk to someone. This outlines how important listening is. The people on the other side of the phone call 
are trained to listen to those in distress. There are many cases where listening has helped people struggling with their mental health. This started with Aaron Beck, who came up with CBT because he believed that, that letting a patient talk through their problems is the most beneficial way of recovery. Listening training is used in the UK for services like Nightline and Dedicated Listeners at Goldsmiths. Dedicated Listeners is a student-run society for students to come to and talk about anything they want. The students who run it are trained to listen, using the correct verbal and body language to make sure the speaker is comfortable and knows they are in the safe place. Training, trained listeners are not there to give advice or opinions, but only to listen. This service has helped a lot of people in the past. Ironically, when we went to talk to them about our project, the dedicated listeners were not there to listen. They have experienced trouble with organizing listeners to attend the sessions, as they don't have many volunteers. Why should people have to seek trained listeners when everybody should already be a trained listener? Mark Twain said if we were meant to talk more than listen, we would have two mouses and one ear. We spoke to Elena Pope, a psychotherapist working in London. She said that listening is the pillar of mental health, meaning that listening is the thing that prevents everything from falling apart. She talked about active listening and that to be fully engaged in what the other person is saying, you need to be listening with your whole body, not just your ears. She explained that 60% of communication is done through body language. Mirroring someone's body language shows that you care about what the other person is saying. This related to our previous research on technical listening in order to keep the speaker comfortable use open body language. We spoke with Emma Howitt, a dancer and choreographer about using your whole body to listen and she gave us walking talking exercise to do where one person is the listener and the other is the speaker. As you're walking and talking, the listener will choose the speed and route you take. Your listening becomes a full body sense and much more about noticing. Using listening as a way of noticing the world around you. How can you use all your senses to know when somebody maybe needs to talk or when somebody needs to be heard? Because maybe they can't say, hey, I need to talk, or call up a line, or make a decision to go to a talking group in the sense of mental health if they don't know themselves yet. As listening is a full body experience, we want to design tools to help the public explore listening through other body parts and senses. Our aim for the tools is to use mirroring techniques so that the listener becomes self-aware of their own body language through mirroring someone else's. We wanted to explore this aim by focusing on gesture, touch, and proximity. This will allow the listener to read the movement and the body language of the person talking. Hello, I'd like to direct your attention to the monitor. We will be showing our listening demonstration and would like the next few minutes of your complete attention. The speaker's hand and arm motions will be felt by the person sitting in the opposite chair. You will feel more connected to the person speaking. To become a better listener, question yourself and your body language. The mirrorizer will start the flow of the listener, reading the movement and body language of the person speaking. As the listener, you are now more engaged with the subject and can feel the same emotions through noticing the hand gestures. Please keep in mind that you can listen, but you might not hear tone, body language, and meaning. Therefore, at this time, you must set yourself to active listening mode until an announcement is made. Now we request your full attention as the listeners demonstrate the listening features of the mirrorizer and the empathizer. Please insert yourself into a symbiotic relationship between listener and speaker. When the listening sign illuminates, you must strap wrists, arms, ankles, and legs tightly. In the event of the speaker smiling whilst talking about a bad experience, you should only be reflecting what you really hear. 
Do have an open body language to lean in and nod to show interest and comfort the speaker. Please remember to be present to what you are transmitting through your body language. Do not in any case have tight body language with crossed arms or legs. When the speaker feels ready, you may pull on the bars to move closer to each other. In this case, you will notice as you get closer, you will have more freedom to move. You are now at a comfortable stage in the conversation where the speaker feels like you are fully engaged. You must place your hands on the pencils. Please keep your hands loosely on the pencil. We suggest that you ensure your hold on the pencil is comfortable throughout the listening as we may experience emotional turbulence. Please do not go against the speaker's drawing process. If you do not understand what they are saying, inquire. Never make assumptions about what the speaker is saying. The pencils can follow each other by moving them to a comfortable position in the direction of the person you are listening to. The speaker should have complete freedom. If the speaker is using this pencil to describe something, they are speaking with this pencil. Pencil contact should be maintained at all times. If you are listening, you are required to guide your own pencil to the same movement simultaneously. Then assist listening to the person's emotions through the vibrations and direction of the pencil. The boundaries of listening are not to be crossed. We then took these tools out to the public for them to use. And so we're kind of like going out the point that how important listening is in um, in that sort of um, that, that subject. And it's definitely some sort of interpretation as yeah. well, because you don't get it hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Sunshine hat. The tools we have created is just the start. Listening can be transmitted through many other senses and body parts, which we intend to explore. Taking our tools to the public has shown us that people are wanting to learn about the importance of listening, especially when it comes to mental health. It's a skill that everyone is aware they could be better at, and by using our tools like ours, it's a fun, interactive way to educate each other about listening. Through noticing the slightest vibrations through a pencil or feeling quicker gestures with your arms and legs, you can feel the person's emotion through other senses. Your eyes and ears don't even matter at this point. This is the start to becoming an active listener. <laughs>